as was mentioned, my name is John Lawler. I'm with WIS Jenny Elsner in our Northbrook, Illinois laboratories. And I want to take the opportunity today to provide a quick summary of the materials aspects of a PCI funded research project titled Implementation of UHPC for Long Span Precast Pretension Elements. This project was led by Mayor Tadros at eConstruct, who was the principal investigator for the project and the lead on the structural design aspects. While we at WJE, and that is myself with a vital assistance from my colleague Elizabeth Wagner, led the materials components. So recognizing that there's significant potential advantage with the use of UHPC, uh, the PCI research project was initiated with the overarching goal of fostering the implementation of UHPC at PCI member plants. Overall, there were two main groups of objectives of the project. The first are materials related objectives, and those were to develop guidelines for production and quality control and to demonstrate that US precasters can produce UHPC based on local materials using existing facilities. And the intent of, of these last two uh, items here was to make implementation of UHPC as accessible and cost effective as possible. The second group of objectives are related to structural design and include uh, the development of design guidelines and preparation of design examples. So for the rest of today's talk, I'm gonna focus on the materials items. A big part of the materials efforts for the project included working with six precasters who volunteered to participate. For each of these precasters, we developed and or characterized a UHPC mixture and then worked with them as they produced various component sized UHPC elements used for structural testing that was part of the structural design component of the project. WGA prepared two materials related deliverables for this project. Uh, the first was guidelines for production and the second was a guide materials specification. These were developed based on the lessons learned through this research project and validated through the in-plant production efforts at these various precasters. So for the rest of today's discussion, I'll be talking about these two deliverables. So if you're a new plant looking to start using H UHPC, the guidelines for production uh, is the document that was written for you. So some key considerations in our approach for implementing uh, this project included the use of local materials and existing facilities. The use of local materials was pursued as a primary means to reduce the cost of UHPC. So the cost of the raw materials for the UHPC mixes produced for this project are about $800 per cubic yard or less. And this is obviously a significant reduction in cost compared to pre-bag materials. We also focused on supporting the use of existing batch plants, including materials handling systems and mixers. And this was consistent with our goal of making implementation of UHPC as easy as possible. During the UHPC production conducted as part of the project, some manual operations were in fact needed for materials not typically used. For example, fiber addition was generally done by hand, but generally existing mixtures were operated at up to 60% of capacity and existing batching equipment was used successfully to produce the UHPC. So let's talk about the specific content of the guidelines document. I'll touch on a few of the sections shown in this outline briefly. Section two defines PCI UHPC. So what do I mean by PCI UHPC? Uh, what we're saying is that that is a, a specific type of UHPC optimized for precast, pre-stressed concrete. And by optimized, I mean that we have placed the focus on the performance attributes that are most important for the long span precast, pre-stressed elements we're looking to, uh, to help develop. So in addition to requirements for flow for self-leveling consistency, we have a compressive strength of 17.4 KSI at service established as our minimum. That's equivalent to 120 MPA. And we have a re recommended strength at release of 10 KSI, though that can be adjusted by the designer depending on the specific application. So while it's easier to test and familiar to most of us, it's our belief that compressive strength can actually be de-emphasized for UHPC. That's de-emphasized. And, and that's because it's really the tensile and flexural strength that's the most important parameter, since that's what really adds to the capability of precast concrete beyond um, what we're typically used to. So for this project, uh, we've adopted flexural strength as the measure of that property. And we are looking at first peak and ultimate peak strengths of 1,500 and 2,000 PSI, respectively, as well as a requirement that the ultimate peak is at least 125% of first peak. 
And this is to ensure strain hardening and post-peak ductility. All right, section three provides a discussion on the of the materials on three levels. First, it talks a little bit about the theory of how the material itself achieves that ultra high performance. Uh, and this performance is largely due to the very dense refined microstructure that's made possible through particle packing. This is the idea that the performance can be optimized by combining materials with a range of particle sizes at specific ratios, such that the smallest materials fit within the spaces between the larger materials, ultimately trying to minimize void space. So recommendations are then given on how to select raw materials, both for size as well as chemical properties. As I mentioned in a few slides ago, a main focus is using readily available materials. But we recognize that some new materials may be required for a precaster looking to use UHPC, and that could include finding a highly effective superplasticizer targeted for UHPC, as well as both a fine sand and a supplemental material that would work with their available cement and silica fume materials to support that efficient particle packing that we're looking for. And finally, we provide an explanation of how to implement a particle packing model uh, for a given set of materials and then work through uh, an example on how to do just that. Section four talks about testing of UHPC. We've defined three categories of testing. First is qualification testing, which might be done during trial batching to pre-qualify a mix. We talk about acceptance testing, which is testing done uh, during production to verify performance. And then we also talk about informational testing. So that supplemental testing um, that might provide information for a designer or verify a specific type of performance that might not be used either for qualification or acceptance, but may be useful for design. So given that tensile performance of UHPC is key for structural applications, it's obviously vitally important that the tensile properties, including the strength and the ductility, be characterized in a reliable and straightforward manner. A few different methods have been developed for testing the tensile performance of concrete. The uniaxial tension test is the most direct test of tensile performance, including strength and ductility. However, this is a more equipment intensive method and is challenging to run. Well, as Rafiq discussed in the um, session earlier this morning, this method is currently being validated through ASHTO. At the time we developed this guideline and specification, there was not a standardized method uh, for a uniaxial tension test. At the other end of the spectrum is the double punch test, which is a simple test to run and based on work by Kyle Riding is showing promise as, as possibly a routine QC test. However, it gives only a rough approximation of post-peak performance. A balance between these two methods is the ASDM standardized C1609 flexural test. Conducted with the appropriate standardized fixture that limits friction at the roller supports, this allows both strength and ductility to be characterized in a straightforward manner. And with the goal of keeping things practical for our project, we selected this as the basis for our efforts here. Through inverse analysis, the tensile strength stress strain response can be estimated and interpreted conservatively. The intent is that provided that the minimum flexural performance limits I've referenced are met, the structural design guidelines developed separately as part of this project uh, will apply. In section five uh, of our guidelines, guidance on production is provided. This guidance was developed based on a combination of literature described best practices, specifications, and observations from the precaster experiences. The topics covered range from materials handling to cure to curing. And while I don't have time to talk about everything, uh, this includes topics like production controls. There are two important factors here. Uh, moisture. Since there's very little water in a UHPC mix, it's important, obviously, to consider all sources. So that includes the sand that most precasters are, are familiar to, to thinking about, but also the super plasticizers, which can be as much as 60% water. Uh, it also includes a discussion of temperature. Uh, the effectiveness of admixtures and the retention of workability is gonna be dependent on the temperature of the mix. So we've recommended a target of 50 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and that in some cases required um, plants to achieve those cooler temperatures through the use of ice or chilled mixing water. Uh, we also talk about fiber addition, which can lead to problems with balling or clumping if not done appropriately. So for the participating precasters, adding fibers over a grating or mesh to help break up the clumps as they came out of the bag was key. Uh, however, this was certainly a slow process and was often the longest component in their mixing cycle. So something that um, as they develop experience and move forward into a, a full production, um, they're going to obviously want to be looking at ways to automate this process. 
Another topic covered is transport of UHPC to the forms and placement once, it's get, once it gets there. This must be done with some care since it's important to avoid coal joints where fibers Inform may not the... be uh, may not be uniformly distributed across the joint. All right. Um, finally, the guidelines include guidance on quality inspection and testing during production, which is obviously handled a little differently than the typical concrete mixtures that precasters are used to dealing with. Um, all right, I'll keep moving. Uh, here, all right, so the, the, the other document that I talked about was the um, uh, guide specification. Um, so this was intended, obviously, for material specifiers. Uh, this guide specification is laid out so that the sections in our document can be rearranged and combined uh, so they can be incorporated into specifications for buildings based on a master format approach and for tra transportation structures using a typical DOT format. Uh, one of the key ideas for specifying UHPC that we've incorporated into the guide spe specification is the materials identity card. Um, so here, each unique UHPC will have its own materials identity card, which is the, the primary submittal for UHPC and identifies the parameters that will influence the UHPC properties, including the source materials, the mixture proportions, uh, and production procedures, including the mixing process and the curing. All right, for the materials identity card, um, our guide specification outlines a list of tests um, and identifies the purpose of those tests. Um, and we also obviously um, provide um, uh, specifications for acceptance testing. This slide uh, shows the range of mixtures that were adopted by the various precasters. Um, as you can see, I'll go through this quickly. Um, the cement types that used uh, included the more common type 1, 2, or type 3 cements, but also a white type 1, 2, and a type um, GUL. Um, all the mixes contain silica fume at various contents. Uh, one precaster was able to reduce their silica fume content by introducing a large amount of slag, um, which is a, a supplemental material. So that is the powder materials used to make the particle packing approach work. Um, among the precasters, both slag and ground limestone were used. Um, the one precaster actually used no supplemental materials. As might be expected, all the mixes have uh, large dosages of high range water reducer, um, and many included another admixture to help maintain workability. All the mixtures had 2% steel fiber. Um, this was a high strength 8 mil diameter fiber with aspect ratios of at least 60, um, and all had a winder, water to binder ratio of around 0.2 or less. All right, and finally, um, to share some of the results of the, the strength testing, um, the slide shows from left to right the compressor strength, then the first peak and ultimate flexural strength of the precaster mixers. Uh, the targets of the UHPC are shown in the green zone. That's the, the PCI UHPC. Um, and as you can see, the average strength for these mixes continually met these targets. Um, as I say this, I do think it's important uh, to note that some precasters found that meeting these targets was made substantially easier with heat curing or post-cure thermal treatment, and such may need to be considered for production. So overall, uh, we feel we've been successful with the UHPC uh, produced at these six precasters. About a dozen exciting new shapes designed to make efficient use of the material properties of UHPC were fabricated and tested. Um, and much of the guidance that is presented in our documents was validated through production operations in each of these precast plants. Uh, and I do want to say, you know, each of those precasters de deserve significant success um, uh, for this project. Um, you know, they had different challenges depending on their operation and they worked through it all. So, um, just to sum up, uh, in addition to the successful construction of the elements I showed on the previous slide, the UHPC materials themselves uh, generally achieve the performance requirements of PCI UHPC on a batch by batch basis. The UHPC mixes definitely saw benefits from heat curing and a post cure thermal treatment, um, but uh, the performance also improved as the precasters gained experience. So based on a mature production process, we certainly anticipate that all the precasters using the mixes developed through this process could be successful in meeting the design targets for PCI UHPC.